Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to a new episode of Superhero Deep Dive. As always, I am your host, Jason. I have a very interesting show scheduled for today. Uh, let me get my disclaimers out of the way and all that good stuff, and we will get into it. Now, the information is pulled from different sources across the internet and may or may not be completely complete, but they do give a really good insight on the current superhero. I do have to add this because... There are times where there may be storylines that I don't include because it really doesn't contribute to the character as much. Um, So, yeah, there's no real need for me to put that in there. Uh, But if you ever feel like you need to contribute something or if there was something I missed that you think is interesting, I am 110% behind hearing it. Uh, Just let me know. You can always reach me every Tuesday and Thursday throughout the day on Outworld Fleet Radio. Their website is www.un-con-inventional.com forward slash radio. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram under Super Deep Dive, and I try to use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive. The best way to reach me is catch me on YouTube under Superhero Deep Dive. Comment, like, subscribe, share. Uh, put any requests in for future episodes put any fun facts or anything that I may have missed because I do love having that conversation with people and I like when other people can see all I ask is that you be respectful because there's no need to not be respectful Um, but if you do want to actually email me directly which I get quite frequently you can email me directly at b the number four it also b for it all at yahoo.com all right So, this week, I am going to be covering the mutant known as Pixie. She is awesome, but she's very underrated. Okay, her real name is Megan Gwen, and she is a Welsh teenager from the fictional mining town called Abergillid. Abergillid? Abergillid. Yeah, we're going to stick with that. Um, her, Her father died in the mine... And because of that, she developed a fear of it and left Wales. She would later discover that she wasn't, that the guy wasn't actually her father, but the villainous Mastermind. Lady Mastermind and Mastermind 2 are her half-sisters. And in her original inception, she had short pink hair, pure black eyes, and butterfly-like rainbow wings. Now, after enrolling at the Xavier Institute... Pixie is assigned to be part of the Paragon's training squad under the tutelage of former New Mutant member Renee Sinclair. Or Rain Sinclair. I always said Renee. Um, someone told me it's Rain. I think in the New Mutants movie they say Rain. I can't remember because it wasn't super great. But it was interesting. But um, I, I always say Renee Sinclair. If I pronounce it wrong, I'm sorry. Um, but she wears a bicycle helmet during training sections her sessions due to her uncertainty with flying now during this time pixie develops a crush on the x-men cyclops and is considered a cheerful girl who fits in well with other students and she was voted friendliest student now pixie along with anole loa wolf cub rock slide and match are told a frightening ghost story by fellow mutant blindfold one night at the school However, they discover that the story is not fictitious, but rather a prophecy, telling Pixie that he is sorry for her loss. Blindfold and her classmates are then sucked into the realm of Limbo, where they are immediately attacked by a mob of demons. Pixie stays by Blindfold's side during the fight, and Blindfold cautions Pixie and the others that Pixie must not fall to darkness. Pixie uses her powers on panel for the first time during the flight, or during the fight, incapacitating several demons with her pixie dust. After Darkchild saves the small group, she asks Nasrith to bring Pixie to her, recognizing that Pixie's soul is the most innocent and therefore the most powerful in Limbo. Now, despite her friend's pleas, Megan submits to Magic's request and uses her soul to create a soul sword and bloodstones. Magical stones form from an innocent soul that grant great power to their owners. But it's freed from the process by Anol. His intervention saves her, but leaves the spell unfinished, resulting in the creation of only one bloodstone and a soul dagger instead. So instead of a whole sword, she gets a dagger. 
Uh, magic then explains that the soul dagger is actually a portion of Pixie's own soul and that the black magic has now filled the hole left behind in the knife's creation, leaving Pixie no longer an innocent. This is represented graphically by a great portion of her pink hair changing to black. Magic then teaches Pixie a teleportation spell and she uses it to teleport herself and her friends to Belasco to prevent him from torturing the rest of the students. Pixie saves the students and ultimately kills Belasco by stabbing him with the soul dagger. After defeating Belasco, Magic wants to use more of Pixie's soul to create more bloodstones to gain more power. Ah, that's selfish. But becomes disgusted with herself when her brother calls out to her. She instead sends Pixie and the others back to the Xavier Institute and seals it all entrances to Limbo. Pixie and Anol are then made official members of the new X-Men team for their bravery in Limbo at the insistence of Rockslide. Pixie later reveals that Doctor Strange will tutor her in magic when she comes of age and begins receiving additional training. Um, yeah. Okay, so when I did this, I apparently mixed up, um, I typed something wrong. So, yeah, okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me, okay, so, she begins receiving additional training. In the 2008 free comic book day X-Men one-shot story called Pixies and Demons, Pixie returns to her hometown after the X-Men disband following the conclusion of the Messiah Complex. However, she finds a demonic Nagari are plaguing the town and are kidnapping people to feed Kiriak the Damned, their leader. Pixie calls in the X-Men to help defeat Nagari, and Megan was has to face her fear of the mine in which her father was killed in order to defeat the demons. After defeating Kiriak, Cyclops and the rest of the X-Men take her back to America and she joins the newly reformed X-Men in San Francisco. After leaving one of Dazzler's gigs, Pixie is ambushed by a group of mass anti-mutant men calling themselves the Hellfire Cult. She is overpowered by the attackers and is subjected to beatings that leave her incapacitated. She manages to make her way back to the X-Men's new base and is immediately taken care of by Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler Karma, and Beast. The attack of the events of the previous year caused her to question whether or not she even wants to be part of the X-Men. But a discussion with Wolverine causes her to stay and assist her them against Empath, whose powers have grown out of control. After beating him up, she stabs him in the head with her soul dagger, leaving him blind and his powers weakened. Then she decides to remain with the X-Men, assisting them in various other missions, including the Skrull invasion of San Francisco. According to the writer Matt Fraction, her role is that of Kitty Pride and Jubilee when they first joined the X-Men. Her strong magical ability as a teleporter and nearly unlimited distance and capacity also causes Nightcrawler, who is much more limited and traditionally serves as the X-Men's primary teleporter, leaves him to question his future and his usefulness to the team, though he later comes to terms with his own abilities and his swordsmanship and things like that. So Wolverine needs to stay away from these young girls. Like, is this just like an un like an unspoken role in, in X-Men? Like, because if it is, I've been reading these all my life. And the more deep dives I do, if there's a mutant and she's a young girl, Wolverine is going to be involved somewhere. And that's just creepy. It's creepy. We don't, we don't need that. Uh, we don't need that. But yeah. Um, ooh, stop it, Wolverine. Okay. <sighs> Let's see here. Okay, despite her cheerful persona, Pixie begins to reveal her anger and bitterness over her initial experience in Limbo and her incomplete soul, feeling that she is less than human. During the training session, Nightcrawler points out that her personality changes when she uses a soul dagger. This causes her to summon it and her personality turns sinister and she stabs him in the chest. She loves stabbing people, causing him to pass out. Upon regaining her senses and removing the dagger, 
she finds that she is free, or it has freed the soul sword housed within Kurt's body. Sensing the soul sword, magic teleports to Earth to reclaim it. However, Pixie engages her in a fight, demanding to have her stolen portion of her soul return, and refuses to hand over the sword. Magic defeats her and regains her soul sword, teleporting away and leaving Colossus distraught. The X Men learn that they are now able to enter Limbo through Pixie's teleportation spell. And a team consisting of Colossus, Wolverine, Mercury, Rockside, Pixie, and Nightcrawler is formed to reclaim magic. Nightcrawler is put in charge due to Pixie and Colossus's personal stakes in the mission. Um, while the X-Men battle various demons in Limbo, Belasco's daughter, Witchfire, defeats magic and adds Pixie's bloodstones to her am amulet, causing Pixie to lose control and teleport herself to Belasco's castle where Witchfire forces her to become her new apprentice and begins forging a final new bloodstone from Pixie's soul, causing her to nightmarishly transform completely into a demon. Witchfire uses the bloodstone to summon the Elder Gods to her aid, and Pixie is reluctantly forced to work together with magic to defeat Witchfire. While the X-Men battle the Elder Gods, Ileana fights Witchfire and strips her of her amulet con containing the bloodstones. Eliana and Pixie use their blades to destroy the amulet, but Witchfire escapes the crumbling castle into the Elder God's dimension, claiming to return um, for her apprentice. Wow. That is crazy. Uh, let me see here. Um, do do do. See, um, I actually, when I was typing this up, I, I mixed up um, certain things. I put some of her history in her power section in my notes, so I'm having to I'm having to sort through it, and I apologize for that. All right, I think I figured it out. Okay, Pixie is then despondent over losing more of her soul, and tries to attack magic with her soul dagger. But the glowing stone in its blade indicates that the additional stolen piece of her soul is inside of it. Pixie flies away in tears into the wilds of Limbo, upset over the additional loss of her soul. Pixie then returns to the X-Men, but demonstrating noticeably improved fighting ability and greater anger when she hears about Professor X, a piece of anti-mutant legislation, oh, Proposition X, I'm sorry, a piece of anti-mutant legislation seeking to control mutant reproduction. She controls to work she continues to work with the X-Men using her abilities to defeat enemies such as Empath and rescue several students and team members, such as when the Sisterhood, a team of mutant villainesses led by the revived Madeline Pryor, attack the X-Men's headquarters. During the protest between the anti-mutant and pro-mutant movements about the mutant reproductive rights, Pixie is injured when a riot breaks out. Later she teleports Rogue, Gambit, and Danger to San Francisco for assistance. She is later made part of a team to battle Emma Frost's Dark X-Men. After Emma Frost, Namor, and Cloak and Dagger betray the Dark X-Men and Norman Osborn to relocate to U and relocate to Utopia, Pixie and Magic begin teleporting everyone into their new island base. During the final battle, Pixie joins Armor and X-23 in fighting Dakin. Um, now there's a bit more, but basically, Pixie is mainly just used as a team's teleporter and not really given too much else towards the character itself, which kind of sucks, but it, it is what it is, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's kind of crazy. All right. Well, what do you guys think? I mean, it's kind of chaotic and I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about her history being mixed up, but I got it in order. Um, yeah. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. All right, let's get into her powers. Now, Megan possesses insect-like wings, and um, depending on the artist, it can be various colors. You know, that's not really something they held down. Um, but the wings allow her to fly. Now, initially, her wings were broad and multicolored, similar to a butterfly's. But recent depictions um, show her to have more translucent wings, like a dragonfly. Um, and it's been suggested that her wings appearance are affected by her psychological state. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's not my call. That's out of my pay grade. I think it was just, she was never taken seriously as a character. And when they started actually taking her seriously, they had to pin down a design. 
um, and try to stick with it. <laughs> and they're just trying to cover up what they did before. And that's my opinion. Um, in addition, her mutation allows her to produce a pixie dust that causes hallucinations, often with comedic effects, such as demons seeing bright bubbles and teddy bears, or in one instance causing Wolverine to see and try to fight a herd of unicorns. In another instance, Megan uses her dust seemingly harmlessly to enhance the audience perceptions of Dazzler's light show during a concert. She states she has no idea what individuals affected by her dust are actually seeing. So, you know, take it for what it is. I mean, I, there's got to be some kind of better correlation. It just hasn't been explained that I've seen. Um, after Magic takes part of Megan's soul in an attempt to create a soul sword, her appearance changes, reflecting um, a portion of her lost soul to, blast, to black magic. Artist depictions to this change um, in her personality are inconsistent, but typically depict her wing or her pink hair with black streaks. Um, this also has the ability to detect a supernatural um, presence as evidence when she fought the Nagari who were under a cloaking spell. When asked how she knows about this, she replies, There's a sliver of darkness that magic put inside my soul, and it's like a compass needle for other dark stuff. Um, she has also been trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat at the Institute. Um, now she has her soul dagger, which is just like the soul, um, soul sword, it's just smaller. Um, when she uses that, you know, her, her personality gets a little bit darker and more sinister. Um, but the, but the soul dagger appears to have physical effects beyond disrupting magic and harming magical creatures. For example, while the abilities of the mutant malice are um, psychic or psionic, and based on mutation and not magic, her soul dagger is able to exercise malice's psyche from karma, uh, for com from Karima. I'm sorry. It also appears to have physically harmed Empath, disrupting his psychic abilities and leaving him blind after he gets stabbed in the head with it. So. Though untrained in the mystical arts, Pixie is able to wield magic, largely due to the black magic that was filled on the missing portions of her soul. Pixie can recite an incantation taught to her by Ileana um, to teleport over long distances and into the dimensions of Limbo. She is capable of teleporting herself and larger groups over vast distances and across dimensions with relative ease. Though teleporting without focusing, which they call blind teleporting, can be hazardous, causing those transported to be scattered and potentially causing injury to Pixie herself. Megan has also been able to banish demons using magic. Um, Megan has also demonstrated that she is capable of casting a sleeping spell. And following the events of the quest for magic, uh, Pixie is approached by both Doctor Strange and Amanda Sefton to receive formal, receive formal tutelage in sorcery after she comes of age so that's kind of cool right like i mean they're kind of putting it in there so they're, they're giving her quite a bit of powers um a lot of them don't make sense her wings can change based on her psychological state that means at any point in time you can see her her wings more from panel to panel and i don't like that i think that's inconsistent um Mainly because I haven't seen anything where they do something like that. It's usually one state during the whole during the whole comic, so it's like an artist thing. But like I said, they're just they've just been incredibly inconsistent with stuff like that. Um, I've also, you know, they're giving her pixie dust, but they they're gonna make them have hallucinations. Do the halluc? But she says she has no idea what the people are seeing. There's got to be more to it. Um, she's got to be able to control something. Is it is it hostile? Is it is it? She said it's generally com or they say it's generally comedic. Um, but can she control that? Can she give people bad hallucinations? What would have happened to all those people that were watching the Dazzler's light show when she was singing, and like? It was like a bad trip on acid or something, you know, all of a sudden, instead of being bright bubbles or something, 
people are seeing like bats or demons flying at them and it's all a hallucination from her the, it's incredibly inconsistent and there needs to be something explained and I don't think there is um, but let me know what you guys think about her powers and her history like I said you can reach out to me via email at b the number four it also b for it all at yahoo.com you can catch me on Twitter Instagram under super deep dive you can catch me on YouTube under superhero deep dive and I try to I try to acknowledge every comment um, even if it's just a like, but I do acknowledge everything that I can. If there's something um, to have a conversation with, I am definitely all about it. So like, comment, subscribe, share, help me grow the channel. Uh, let's have a discussion on these things. If there's anything that I missed in her powers, if there's anything that I missed in her history that you feel is substantial, let me know, please. Um, but let me get into fun facts. She's actually pretty interesting as far as facts go. In 2014, BuzzFeed ranked Pixie number 41 out of their 95 X-Men members ranked from worst to best. So she's over the hump going towards the best. Um, in 2014, Entertainment Weekly ranked her 64th in their Let's Rank Every X-Men Ever. Uh, 2016, Comics Alliance gave Pixie a score out of, of 38 out of 50 in their 100 X-Men how do Sunspot, Pixie, Leech, Revenge, and Quicksilver rate as great X-Men? So, she got pretty good. Uh, let's see, 38 out of 50, that's like a 76. Okay, 76%, not bad. Uh, 2018, Comic Book Resources to CBR.com ranked Pixie 20th in their 20 most powerful Supernatural Marvel characters. Um, 20th in their 20 X-Men who are much more powerful than they look list. And 25th in their 25 most powerful young X-Men. So she was at the bottom of the list for all of this, but she was on the list. So she was ranked on the list. Uh, in 2018, Gay Star News ranked Pixie third in their seven LGBTI heroes we want to see in Marvel's new all-female TV series list. Which just kind of seems like a very, very selective list, but it's still there. <laughs> Um, in 2020, what culture ranked Pixie second in their Marvel Phase 4 10 Mutants Who Should Be in the MCU X-Men list? Uh, in 2022, Newsarama included Pixie in their 20 X-Men characters that should make the jump from Marvel Comics to the MCU. In 2022, MovieWeb ranked Pixie eighth in their eight LGBTQ plus Marvel Comics characters that need to be in the MCU list. So... In this history, I didn't see anything about her being an LGBTQ plus character, but apparently she is. So, I mean, I know she had a crush on Cyclops. So maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Um, But let me know. Let me know in the comments. That would be great. Because I couldn't find anything. Um, and it could just be, I missed it. Um, I'm not going to lie. My daughter had prom uh, this week. Uh, while I'm recording this, uh, it's been a lot of stuff. We had soccer games cancel on us and then get rescheduled. So all week long, it has been nonstop for me. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit frazzled and trying to get this done too. So if I missed it, I could have easily skipped over it without even realizing it. So let me know. Um, a couple other fun facts. Pixie appears in the Wolverine and the X-Men episode Excalibur. Uh, where she is depicted as having her trademark pink hair and colorful pixie wings. The only ability, though, she displays is flight. Um, in the episode Greetings from Genosha, Pixie is later seen arriving in Genosha, and in the episode Foresight Part 2, she is shown as one mutant caught by a sentinel. And Pixie also appears in the X-Men Destiny video game, voiced by Eiling Onkasis, She's first seen at a rally attack working with Caliban to locate and rescue fleeing mutants. She's later captured by the Purifiers, leading to a frantic chase across the city to stop them from synthesizing her teleportation powers. Um, the helicopter she's trapped on is shot down and Pixie is killed in the crash. So, it's kind of weird because they put her teleportation powers as actual powers instead of it being a magic spell. So, they kind of changed it a bit, but it's still there. Um, Pixie also appears as a playable character in Marvel Super War. Um, 
which is a, uh, I think it's like one of those MM, MMORPGs, I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure, but, yeah, what do you guys think? I'm gonna give my final thoughts on this, and they're not great, but, you know, they're there. <laughs> I've always thought Pixie had so much more potential than they ever really gave her credit for. I thought Pixie could be a future leader of a whole generation of X-Men just with her potential. Um, but I don't think that the powers that be think what I think. With that said, I still think Pixie has so much potential in the Marvel Universe, even in the MCU. And theoretically speaking, I can see Pixie as a potential bridge between the magical world and the mutant world in the MCU. Um, so let, let's think about it. Like, what if we see various magical schools like they showed in Multiverse of Madness? Um, you know, when like the Scarlet Witch was coming to invade uh, the, the main place, uh, they had schools from all over coming to help defend it. Well, let's put schools. Let's go Harry Potter. You know, there's going to be a bunch of schools everywhere, right? And it's just what they do. Uh, but they're going to have a bunch there. So, we see her. We see her in one of these schools, like, with just her pink hair. It's going to be a, one of the Doctor Strange movies. It's got to be, or something. But we're going to see that. We're going to see... We're going to see her in one of the schools with pink hair. She shows a good talent for magic, so Doctor Strange starts working with her, only to find out that she's a mutant, and she can help find other mutants because of that genetic connection. They've already introduced it with uh, Miss Marvel. They've already introduced it with uh, Namor in the Black Panther 2 movie. So, you know we know, that, we know that mutants are there. We know that there's... There's something uh, that it is a like a classification. So what if we introduce it in the magic world? You know, she she is able to tune in to other mutants and find them. Um, then this leads her to finding various mutants, which we can have as various Easter eggs. They don't have to be part of the main X-Men team. Uh, just random mutants that we would find. It'd be great. But this leads to um, various means being found and even shows Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. And then it spirals out from there. So we can see where the mutant school is, where we have Xavier, we have um, him already finding other mutants too and recruiting them. This could be a great way to introduce the X-Men before they're even X-Men and get a head start on their origins. So like she finds she finds the mutant school or the Xavier school for gifted youngsters. Um they're training mutants there. So we find out that Xavier already knew about them. He is finding them. They've been under the radar this whole time because they haven't been active. They haven't actually gone and helped people yet. They're just training. And then something spirals. Uh we find, you know, in uh in Pixie's quest to find other mutants, like with Doctor Strange, they find an evil mutant. Uh, it could be anyone. If if they're in the United Kingdom, uh, you know, in Wales and stuff like that, because she's Welsh, what if they find, like, Black Tom Cassidy or something? You know, uh, something, something similar to that. Yeah, I don't know who the villain could be. It could be anyone. But this leads to the introduction of the X-Men and go and like I said, it spirals out from there. So she can be that bridge between those two worlds. She can start training with the with Xavier and Doctor Strange. And then that will open the door for an, an X-Men movie. Uh, where she doesn't even have to be a big part of it. It's just she is opening that door. But that's my idea. What do you guys think? Does does my idea hold any water? Um, some of my ideas have been shot down by people, and it's it's okay. Some of them have loved my ideas. Some of them have given completely different ideas, and they're even better than what I could have thought. So let me know in the comments. Like I said, you can reach me via email if you want it. Be the number four. It also be for it all at yahoo.com. 
You can reach me on Twitter or Instagram under Super Deep Dive. I try to use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive, and I don't post on Twitter very much, but I post on Instagram every day uh, with superhero memes. I also post on YouTube every day with superhero memes. Uh, I do videos, and then I post like funny animal videos. I post a podcast, all that good stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, hit that bell notification icon, all that good stuff that I don't remember anymore. Um, but yeah, let's have a conversation. Let's let's talk about these things. I would love to hear you guys' idea. I'd love to hear if you have any critiques, if you have any suggestions uh, for future episodes, requests. If, if there's something you want me to improve on, probably not saying um as much. I'm working on it. But I, I am all ears. Like I said, let's just be respectful and we'll go from there. But I think I'm going to head out for now. Guys, I hope everyone is blessed. I hope everyone is happy. I hope everyone is safe and I hope everyone is smart. But if you're not smart, don't get caught, okay? All right, I'm going to head out. See you next week. Everyone have a good one. Bye-bye.